What's up guys? My name is uh, Tai Zen. Welcome to the uh, cryptocurrency.market channel. This is a uh, trading, investing, and entrepreneurship channel. Uh, it's, you know, we try to share the experiences that we have managing a seven, eight, nine figure portfolio uh, in the real world, right? And not just in the um, la la land, fantasy land, okay? So, in this video guys, I wanna talk about, you know, do you, do you trust what you see in, with your own eyes in crypto land, okay? Or do you just go by what people say? Do, do you, you actually trust what you see in front of you, okay? So many of you guys know that I came as a Vietnamese refugee to America uh, after the war between America and Vietnam. And I came to America really poor, so I grew up in the ghettos, in the black neighborhoods in America where it's really poor and ghetto, hung around the wrong people, got involved in drugs, and ended up in federal prison for drugs for nearly 14 years, okay? And I got out when I was in my mid-30s, and mid-30s and, you know, learned how to trade, you know, spent several years working on World, Wall Street, learning from some of the best traders in, in the world, you know, there in New York City, and just learning from a bunch of different people in America on how to trade. And I was able to retire uh, thanks to my trading and investing, uh, by the time I was in my mid 40s. So here I am broadcasting to you guys from District 7 in the city of Ho Chi Minh City in the country of Vietnam. Uh, I left America and came back to um, Vietnam to take care of my sick mom because the rest of my uh, uh, family was not able to financially help her, okay? So I still make these videos, guys, because one of the things that I was really disappointed with when I was growing up in America was that I was lied to so many times, okay? Especially about finances, you know, like, for example, yeah, I was lied about many things, but finances is one of the uh, biggest things that I, was, that I was lied to about, okay? And let me move out of the, man, the sun here is so damn bright right now, okay? Okay, so what happened was, when I was growing up in America, you know, one of the things I was, you know, trying really hard, like a typical Asian, to, to study and make A's, even though I was dumb as shit. I was not very good in math and science, you know, and you know, it was really disappointing to see all my friends and my classmates uh, do better than uh, me in school, and you know, all the Asian kids making uh, straight A's in school, and here I was struggling just to you know, pass a simple algebra class, okay? So I remember being taught a lot of stuff in school. When I was in high school, I dropped out in the, in the 11th grade, all right? But before I dropped out, you know, I was taught that if you smoke marijuana, you would die. If you do cocaine, your heart would explode. If you smoke crack or something, you know, your brain would burst and, you know, poof, like a firecracker. Like a, uh, like a balloon that you stick with a needle, okay? So I was taught a lot of these things in the American school system, right? And, you know, I was taught about, you know, how different governments work, how a democratic government works, how the uh, uh, monetary system works in America, you know, how history works, and just all kinds of, you know, things that we all learn in school. But then I was really disappointed when I got out onto the streets and, you know, when I hung around the wrong people and I got involved in drugs and went to prison. During those nearly 14 years that I was in prison, you know, I had a chance to study a lot of things and it was the first time in my life that I was able to go and talk to other people from around the world, okay? So I was able to talk to, you know, when, man, this sun just keeps following me. Let me, uh, I'm gonna come over here, guys. Um, hoping that the sun will stop. Um, following me here, okay? So, when I got into school, I was, uh, when, I mean, when I got into prison, I was very disappointed because, <clears throat> I was very disappointed, guys, because a lot of the things that I was taught that I thought was true, it turned out it was not true, you know? Very, very, very disappointed that I spent all that time you know, learning about, you know, school, about education, about, you know, um, about all kinds of different things. You know, like, for example, like I struggled in math, 
And then I come out of school and in prison I find out that, you know, there's math systems like the abacus uh, math that's invented in India, you know, that where people can add numbers and subtract numbers and divide numbers in their head. And, you know, you can do, tell them the numbers, you know, what's 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus 51 divided by 6, you know, multiply by 17 divided by 251. And the kids would just give you the answer like that. And I'm thinking like, how come they didn't teach me that shit back in school? Like, why, why were they teaching me all this garbage for? And then, you know, the history, you know, they, 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 they taught us, you know, like, you know, uh, why we had Thanksgiving in America, you know, uh, um, you know, why President Lincoln got assassinated and all this stuff. And then when I got into prison and I started reading other books and started learning from other prisoners about the history of America, you know, I get a different view and I get a different perspective. And I started to realize, you know what, that, that made sense, you know, why you know, why someone would want to kill uh, uh, or assassinate President Lincoln. Now, now I see why, you know, he wanted to, you know, uh, release, the, uh, free the slaves, uh, the black slaves in America. You know, now I understand why, you know, there, there was an opium war in, uh, between, you know, uh, uh, Britain and, and, and China, you know. Now, now I understand why, you know, the Vietnam War happened. You know, when I was growing up uh, in America, right, when I first came to America in the late 70s and the early 80s, right, I didn't know anything about the war, you know, but I grew up in America and I was taught that, you know, America won the war. And it wasn't until years later that I, re that I found out that America lost the war and they abandoned uh, uh, Vietnam, you know. And, and so, um, here, here, here's something else, you know. The, the whole 40 years that I was living in America, right, um, this is going to sound crazy to you guys, but, you know, the Vietnamese flag uh, in America has three red stripes uh, 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 in it on a yellow background, okay? And then I come back to Vietnam and the flag is actually a yellow, a star. It's just one star on, on a red background, uh, one yellow star, you know? And I'm thinking like, how did that happen? How, how did I live for 40 years in America as a Vietnamese and not know that, that the, the three stripes was not the correct flag for Vietnam, right? So I didn't know that the, the political party that lost in Vietnam, they're all living in America now. And so they're still flying the, the, the old uh, flag that they, that they were flying when they were puppets for the uh, U.S. government. And, and now I come back to Vietnam and I'm like, wait a minute, like, how come I don't see no flags with three stripes on it? All I see is a flag with one star on it. And I come to find out that the three stripe flag is not the correct flag for the country of Vietnam. The correct flag for it has one star on it, you know. And so, this, 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 you know, things like this really bother me. And, you know, you guys know that I'm not very, you know, smart and, and very intelligent when it comes to math and science and all that stuff. But one thing that has led me to, to uh, becoming wealthy and be able to become a millionaire by the time, you know, like 11 years after I got out of federal prison with nothing, like with absolutely nothing. I had no money, no shorts. I remember I had to lied to the uh, uh, prison guards and asked him to give me like, you know, three shorts and, and, and like three boxers, uh, three underwears and, and, and three t-shirts. And they asked me like, well, we're only supposed to issue you one. And I'm like, well, where I'm going, it's going to be really cold, man. You know, and I really need, I don't have no coats, no jackets, no nothing. So, and, and they couldn't give us no coats or jackets. So the guy, you know, the prison guard was nice enough to give it to me. And, and what it was is because I didn't have no clothes. I didn't have nothing. So I, I wanted three pairs so that in case I had, I find a job and I had to go to work or something, I had a t-shirt to wear and then I still had two as a backup so that I can go home and then wash it, you know, by hand when I take a shower, dry it up and then wear it the next few days. So that, that was the reason why I needed more than one outfit, okay? And I remember when, when I came out, one of the things that prison taught me was to trust what I see, to trust my eyes, okay, to trust what I see. You know, and one of the things that, that, that I realized was that there's a lot of things that we are taught in society that is really not true. Like, for example, like, I, I, I worked so hard. You guys have no idea, you know, like how hard Asians study. Like, you guys hear about it, but you guys really don't know about it. Right? You, unless you're an Asian yourself. If you're Asian and you're listening to this, you know how hard you have to study, right? Um, like, I remember bringing home my report card, and if I didn't have an A on my report card, my dad would beat the living shit out of me. Like, he would go out there and chop a branch down, and he would just beat the shit out of me until me and my brother made straight A's. Now, how the hell you beat 
a kid and, and they make straight A's? I don't know. I, I don't know how that works. I don't know the science of how you just beat the crap out of a kid and then all of a sudden now he makes straight A's. You know, like if, if you're, you're dumb and you're ignorant, you're stupid and you're not very smart in math and science, I don't see how beating them up is going to make them A's. But that's how my dad knew. That, that was the only thing that he knew because that's what his dad did for him. His, his dad would chop down bamboo uh, canes and beat the crap out of him so he can do well in school. So that, that you know, in Vietnam, that's the, I'm like the last generation of kids that get the hell beat out of them to make better grades, right? Uh, now, when you come over here, you don't see that no more. In the countryside, you know, in the very, very poor villages, you still see a little bit of that. But in most of the, the areas that's, uh, that's been uh, developed in Vietnam, you don't see that no more, right? Because they know that, hey, that doesn't work. But back then, my dad didn't know that. So in America, even though it was illegal, he was still beating the crap out of me uh, for that, right? So um, what I realized was that when I got out of school, a lot of things that people taught me in school was not true. You know, like for, uh, you guys hear me say this over and over all the time. I really thought when I was in high school that if you smoke weed or marijuana, that you would just die. If you do drugs like cocaine or heroin, you, you, there's no way you could live. And then. You know, when, when, when I go out into the ghetto and I see, you know, all these black people smoking weed, you know, smoking crack, shooting heroin, they didn't die. They didn't die. You know, matter of fact, they were more motivated to go, you know, uh, make money, work, steal, you know, or do whatever they need to do to fulfill their drug habits, you know. And, and I always ask myself, like, why was I taught this nonsense? Like, why was I taught this in, 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 in school for when it's not true out in the real world? Like, why didn't someone just say, hey, man, you know, if, if you get involved in drugs or something, you know, several things can happen. You, you, you can become extremely addicted to it and it's going to destroy your life, you know, destroy your teeth, destroy your health, destroy your career, destroy your family, destroy your relationships, right? But killing you, no. That, it ain't. Uh, drinking and driving will kill you faster and quicker and easier. And, you know, if you drink and drive, you have a better chance of killing yourself than you do doing drugs. Now, why didn't someone tell me that? Why, why didn't someone tell me that? Why did they tell me this nonsense that was not true, right? You guys have no idea how many people I have seen in America smoke weed every day of their life. I know guys that smoke weed every day and they seem to function like a normal human being. At least that's what they claim, right? They're not dying to me. But I was taught that these people would die if they do that, you know? And imagine being taught this and then you go into the real world and you find out it's not true. It's not real, okay? You know, like, um, so when I ask you guys, uh, if you guys see, uh, do, you, do you believe what you see or do you trust what you see in crypto, right? What I'm asking you guys is that if you see that this is, do you truly see that this is something that's revolutionary, it's something that's going to change finances, something that is going to change, change the, the banking system, the monetary system, the payments, the global payment system. Do you see crypto doing that? Okay, if you do, right, then why are you panicking during a bear market? Why are you panicking when the market sells off? Why are you panicking when all the short-term day traders are selling to take a profit? Why are you panicking whenever the big institutions are, you know, you know, doing some type of manipulation behind the scenes that you and I don't know about uh, so that they can make money, right? Why? Because over the long term, over the five, you know, over a five, 10, 20 year span, guys, you know, crypto is going to come out ahead. It's going to come out ahead. Why are you sitting on the sidelines waiting for a crystal ball or some, you know, magic, you know, uh, to happen to let you know that this is the signal to get involved into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Why, why are you waiting for that? Do you, do you trust what you see? Do you trust that the fiat system that we have is not working? Do you, tr do you see that the banks, right, they're printing money with nothing backing it, and now they just, you know, the, the, the US banks, the Federal Reserve, the central banks, they just printed billions and billions and billions of dollars. Do you see that that's going to dilute the money that's in my pocket, the money that's in your pocket, that over the long term that cannot be sustainable? If you, if you see this and you believe it, right, then why aren't you invested into Bitcoins and cryptocurrencies? Even if you don't know how to trade, even if you're scared as shit, right, and you don't know, you're afraid, right, why not put a hundred dollars out of your paycheck every month into Bitcoins? Why, why not just buy a little bit? Buy a little bit of Ethereum, buy a little bit of Bitcoin Cash, buy a little bit of Bitcoin SV, buy a little bit of Zcash, buy a little bit, just, just buy a hundred bucks of each one. 
okay, of the top 30 coins and just keep it there, right? Each month, just buy another 100 bucks of a different coin, another 100 bucks and see which one hits, okay? You don't know which one's gonna go up. You don't know how much they're gonna go up. Nobody knows, right? So you gotta, you know, the top 30 coins is fine. The ones that you can put into a hardware wallet, those are good enough so that you have exposure, so you have some kind of skin in the game. You don't wanna live through the absolute most innovative financial innovation, the most innovative financial technology ever created by humans and miss out on that opportunity to make some life-changing profits, guys, right? That's why I'm asking you guys, do you guys trust what you see? Do you trust and see that this is not working? For example, right, like I come back to Vietnam, right? I come back here and I uh, have, I homeschool my own kids. I hire tutors to come and teach them languages. That's, that's all I want them to learn right now. Between now, they're like six and seven years old, between now and like 10 years old, my goal is to get them to learn how to speak English, Chinese, uh, Mandarin, uh, Vietnamese, because you know, they're Vietnamese and they're half Thai. So I want them to speak you know, Vietnamese, Thai, English, Chinese, and then the last language I want them to learn is Spanish, right? If I can get them to learn that before they're like 10 or 12 years old, then I feel like I will have accomplished a massive, massive task for my kids and create absolute tremendous value for their lives moving forward in the future. Because I've never seen somebody that speaks three, four languages that are broke. And I definitely have never seen someone speak English, Mandarin Chinese, and Spanish and be broke. All those people seem to do well financially for themselves and live a pretty good life, okay? So those are the things that I want because I don't want my kids growing up with a one-track mind thinking that they're going to grow up, go to college, get a bullshit four-year degree or a piece of paper and go out into the world and become wealthy and rich, okay? And when I do this, all the Vietnamese families around me, right, they think that I'm crazy, I'm nuts, you know? Right behind here, uh, right behind this uh, pyramid, a water fountain right here, right behind those buildings, that, that red building, the orange building that's being constructed right now, right behind that is an international school and it costs money to go there, all right? So every family in Asia, you know, they, they, they put kids in school not because they want their kids to have a better education. Um, in Asia, in America, you put your kids in school to have a better education, better jobs, but over here, that's secondary. Over here in Asia, you put your kids in the best school so that you have face, so you, you have you know, so you can go brag to your friends that, hey, my kids went to this school, my kids went to that school, or whatever. So everything here, you know, is, is very material. It's material in America also, but they try to keep it low key. Here in Asia, you know, it's like, it's out in the open, man. Like, when they meet each other, they, hey, yeah, my kids go to this school, this school. My friend, he works here, he works there, he has this manager position, he has this executive position. So it's very, very common uh, for, uh, uh, I'll make a separate video about that later, but it's very common for you to, you know, uh, quote unquote brag about and, and show off where your family status is at, your kids and everything like that when you meet somebody new here. That's, that's very common. They're like, they'll ask you. You don't even have to tell them, they'll ask you, okay? Um, so when they ask me where my kids are going to school, I tell them they're not, they're at home and I have them um, uh, being tutored privately at home. Uh, and I have them, and they're like, oh, you know, you have to put your kids in school. And I'm like, no, I don't. I don't have to put my kids in school. You know, I want to prepare them for what's ahead in their life. I don't want to prepare them for my life. I want to prepare them for their life and what's coming in the future. You know, my parents were trying to teach me, you know, raise me to grow up in an agricultural society, in a rice paddy society, in a fishing and farming society. And then I'm in America. Like, I'm not going to fish and farm for a living. You know, there's a lot of other things to do. The, the, the world has evolved beyond that. Okay, like we got automation, machines, bulldozers, tractors, you know, scavengers, you know, all kinds of construction and farming equipment, you know, harvesters to, 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 to help people, you know, where one or two people or a small group of people can, can farm and do all the agricultural stuff or do all the fishing stuff to feed the entire city or the village. So I don't need to be doing that, okay? And that's not gonna make me the most money anyway. So I don't want my kids like I see all my friends growing up around me, they all come out with four-year college degrees and, and I don't see that as a good path to success. Do I believe in education? Absolutely. But I don't believe that the college education uh, uh, is adequate to provide my kids with the tools and the mindset and the skills that they need when they go out and survive out in the real world, okay? And with what the, the wealth that I'm going to leave them, they sure as hell ain't gonna learn that in school. They'll be better off 
you know, learning and studying from my cryptocurrency investing blueprint that I created. You know, that's that's for them. That, that's why I created that. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, if you're making so much money from you know trading, investing crypto, why why you got to sell a course for? Well, you know what? Uh, are there traders out there that sell courses and that's where they make most of their money? Yes, there are. I've seen them. All right. But then are there traders that make a shitload of money from crypto and they don't have to sell courses? Uh, yeah. And that's us. Right. That's why, you know, I, I created our course, the Cryptocurrency Investing Blueprint, because that's the wealth that I plan on leaving my kids. I, I don't want to leave my kids money because I have never seen someone in my life where you just give them money and they know what to do with it. You have to educate them on how to manage money, how to take care of money, how to grow money and what to do with it. OK, in order for it to grow and keep it. So I don't plan on leaving my kids a bunch of money. Uh, and then they just waste it all. I'm gonna leave them the education, the skills, and the knowledge. So if you guys are wondering if the, the cryptocurrency investing blueprint is good enough for you, well, just consider that's what I created for my kids, okay? Because that's the wealth that I'm gonna leave them, okay? That's the inheritance that they're gonna get. Because I'm gonna try to spend all my money as much as I can during my lifetime, because I work my ass off to get it, okay? And they need to work their ass off to get their money, okay? And so when I see that these schools are not preparing my kids, for the future that lies ahead for them, right? I have to make a tough decision to, to, to train my kids and get them the education that they need so that they can survive in this world. And a lot, of, almost everyone in Vietnam, matter of fact, it's not almost, it's 100% of the people around me here in Vietnam, they just think I'm crazy. They just think I'm nuts. But then I look at them and I point to them at the school when I see all the parents here, I point to them at the school and I say, there's like a thousand kids in there. You think we got jobs? How many of those schools do we have here in Ho Chi Minh City? There's 10 million people here. How many of those schools are there? There's a bunch of them. And how many kids do they produce that graduate from high school and from college every year? They're, you know, we don't have enough jobs for all those kids. And even if we did have it, I don't want my kids making you know, just a living wage. I want them to be wealthy. I want them to have the freedom that I have right now to where I can sit here, goof off, make videos that I want, and go to the beach, swim at the beach, go eat whatever I want, wherever I want, whenever I want. To me, that's wealth, okay? And, and, and I don't like that. You guys see all these uh, homes right here? All these, uh, 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 these town homes? These are like a, a whole, this whole area here is full of town homes. The land, just, just to buy the land alone, um, that's, uh, that's uh, like um, eight, I think it's eight meters, eight meters by uh, 20 meters, that's about 160 uh, square meters, 160, 180 square meters, I think it's somewhere around there, right, is a million dollars, a million US dollars. And if, if uh, 160, uh, uh, eight meters by 20 meters is some, similar to, you know, just think of it as eight yards by 20 yards. That, that's, that piece, small piece of land is a million dollars. And then it costs another like, I think like four or five hundred thousand dollars to build each one of those townhomes. So those properties right there, right next to me, is one of the wealthy neighborhoods here in District Seven. So it's like around a million and a half dollars to get one of those uh, four and a half story townhomes built with a basement underneath. Okay. So when 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 these people here, they make all this money, but they have no freedom. They're stuck there at the house. They have to work. Uh, you know, they can't come over here and walk around this water fountain every day and do exercise. They can't sit here and make videos and just goof off like I'm doing right now. And for me, to me, that's like a prison. To me, that's not freedom. I, I value freedom. They value having a face, okay? They have value having, being able to brag to each other that they have a big home, uh, you know, that they live in a multi-million dollar home. I don't give a shit about that, okay? I, I, I'm more, so that's why all these families are here put their kids in the international school right next door so that, that they can brag to their friends that their, their kids are going to a good school. But it doesn't matter how good the school they're going to, they're putting their kids up to train them to have an employee mindset. They're not training their kids to have a uh, entrepreneurship mindset, to build businesses and build value in the world. They're not training their kids to be able to manage their wealth. If these families, all these families right here that have these million and a half dollar properties right here, if they leave that to their kids, that school's not going to teach them how to manage that wealth and manage that real estate. All these people here are, most of them, most of them are very wealthy business people and most of them are wealthy real estate investors. Like they hit it big in real estate. And that, 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 that I don't care how much that, that uh, international high school here charges them, 
they are not capable of teaching all these kids that live in these million and a half dollar homes right here uh, how to manage money, how to take care of their parents' wealth, how to continue that wealth, how to maintain it, how to grow it, how to invest it, how to earn interest off of that. Those schools are not gonna teach them. And then the college that's right down the street over here behind this camera, that's right down the street from me, they don't have the ability to teach that because if they did, they'd be living in a house like that. The teachers would be living in a house like that, okay? So they don't know it. So why would I send my kids to go to schools that cannot teach them how to make a million dollars or manage a million dollars. Like that doesn't even make sense to me. So I can see it with my eyes, guys, and I trust what I see. I see that they are not, the schools here, here or in America or anywhere in the world are not capable of teaching the kids how to manage and make a, make a million dollars or manage a million dollars. So I'm not gonna put my kids in there. I'm gonna put my kids in my school, in what I see that they need. Right, because I've been through that. I've been through that journey and I have lots of friends that have made a million dollars and we know what it takes to train someone and we know what it takes, the skills that someone needs in order to manage and grow a million dollars. So I'm not gonna put them in that school. Now, a lot of people here think I'm stupid. They think I'm crazy, right? They think I'm nuts, right? They think that, hey, if you're so rich, why don't you buy one of these you know, million dollar homes? I'm like, why would I do that when I can leave that million dollars in the market and grow it? Well, 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 you know, I live in, in a luxury apartment complex right here, right, right there. And the rent is like $1,000 a month. My whole family lives in a luxury apartment complex, one of the most luxurious ones in Ho Chi Minh City for 1000 bucks a month. We get swimming pool, everything. Like you guys see this, uh, all those uh, palm trees up there? all those uh, 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 palm trees up there, that's the swimming pool on the fifth floor, right? We got like a, a, a pool up there. You guys see in my other videos, I got a pool up there for my kids that's bigger than like twice the size of a, of, of a standard uh, 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 Olympic sized pool. So, well, you know, and it's funny because th these people are asking, well, how come I don't buy one of those million dollar townhomes, but they have to come over here and use the services over here in the luxury apartment that I'm in, okay? so. What I'm saying, guys, is that if you guys see something that is out in the real world, whether it's relationships, whether it's money, whether it's school, I invite you guys, man, just look at that and really trust what you see, right? Trust what you see. Like, I'll give you guys an example. Like, over here, one of the ways to convey wealth is they go cut down a thousand-year-old tree, a 500-year-old tree. I'm not talking, I'm not joking, guys. These trees about the size of a redwood tree. Uh, you know, in America, you cannot cut, that's illegal for you to cut down a tree that big. They cut it down here in Vietnam, and there's a bunch of them, okay? They used to cut them down, and they go across the country next door, uh, uh, Cambodia and Laos, cut down their trees, and they'll plane it into a piece of wood. I'm not, I'm not kidding about this guy. A piece of board that's about, you know, maybe uh, the, uh, 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 like this thick, right? About as thick as my head, and then, they would make it so that it's like two meters wide and like five meters long. They would just cut a big old board, a big old giant board like that. And they would put it in their house and to convey wealth. And the first time that I went in there into someone's house, a wealthy person's home, and I saw that giant piece of board, just a piece of, just a giant block of wood. And I thought, hmm, that's weird. Why is somebody putting a big old piece of wooden board in their living room for and like, it pretty much took up the whole goddamn living room okay and i went over there and i picked it up and i was like hey this is some nice looking wood here and i tried to pick it up and it wouldn't move because i thought it was a veneer because in america most of the woods that you see they're all veneer they're just a layer on the outside and just like particle board that glued together on the inside but then on the outside just a veneer right and i thought wait a minute this is a solid piece of wood that's like you know like six foot wide and like 20 foot long, 15, 20 foot long. And I'm thinking like, well, and I walk around the piece of board, the, 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 I call it a board, but it's not really a piece of board because it's really thick like this. It's more like a block of wood is what it should be called, right? Instead of calling it a board. Because you know, when I say board, you think of some wood that's only this thick, but this is a big block of wood. And I'm walking around this big block of wood. I'm walking around it. It's got beautiful wood grains, like one of the most beautiful pieces of wood that you've ever seen, right? And I'm thinking like, why does someone have this giant block of wood inside their living room for? 
There's no like patterns, there's no flowers, there's, there's nothing ornate cut into the wood. It's just a big old block of wood just sitting inside their living room and it's been stained so and it's been coated, clear coated so that it protects the wood and everything. And I found out that one of the ways to convey wealth in Vietnam is to have expensive blocks of wood inside your house. Like really expensive. So that block of wood, I didn't realize it, but it was like a hundred thousand dollars uh, US dollars for that block of wood. It's about six foot wide and like 10 inches thick about this thick and it's about like 15, 18 foot long, okay? And it's like a $100,000 block of wood and they just leave it right there in their living room. And whenever they have guests over, you know, it would be an honor to be invited to sit on that. So if you guys come over to a house in Vietnam and you see somebody with a big old block of wood in the middle of their living room, uh, don't go and sit on it because that's extremely rude. You have to wait until the, the uh, homeowner invites you to sit on there. And if you sit on there, it's, 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 a very, it's, it's, a, it's, an, uh, uh, it's an honor to be invited to sit on there. So I, I just want to let you guys know the culture here, okay? So when I first see this board, I'm thinking like, is somebody crazy to chop down a thousand year old tree or a 500 year old tree just to have a block of wood in their living room to convey wealth? Right? And this just blew my mind. And I went into one house after the other, all the rich uh, villas and the wealthy homes here. Uh, what in America, we would call it mansions. Over here, they call them uh, villas, okay? And I'm like, all these houses have this block of wood just sitting in the middle of the living room, right? And it's like the craziest thing. And, uh, and I'm thinking like, there, there's no way that this could be a real tree. This, this has to be like boards stitched together and glued together and sanded down to make it look like a giant block. Like, like how, how could they possibly have this many trees that big in Vietnam? And come to find out, they do. They, they, you know, because um, over here, the land is like pretty much <laughs> underwater, you can say. Okay, so there's a lot of water here in the land and the, and the soil is very fertile. Like, if I drive from Ho Chi Minh City down southwest towards my village, it takes about 11 hour drive. And if I had no food and no water in the car, there's so much food and water, uh, like coconuts and all kinds of fruit along the highway, that if I was that poor to where I didn't have no money for food, I would still not starve. Like no matter where I drive, I can just stop at any time and go outside and pick coconuts, bananas, mangoes, papaya, all kinds of fruit and just eat it right there. I like you would not starve uh, anywhere in South Vietnam. I haven't been to North Vietnam yet, I don't know, but like in the southern part of Vietnam, from like uh, uh, the, the middle half of Vietnam all the way down, you're not gonna starve. Like you don't ever have to worry about getting stuck on the, on the side of the road and not having food because there is like fruit trees everywhere and they grow like that in nature, okay? That's not even including the farms that they have, okay? So I can see why the French wanted to conquer and invade and take the, the Vietnamese land and I can see why the Japanese and the Chinese wanted it and the last country to try to invade uh, Vietnam and take this land from everyone is the US obviously you know and I, I can see why because there's so much natural resources here uh, I can see why they would want it right but anyways back to what I was saying guys when, when, when I saw this you know I went down to the, uh, the tree um, the, 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 the uh, what do you call that? The wood shops, so I can see it for myself. And when I went there, I saw these big, giant blocks of wood. And I'm like, holy crap, I didn't realize they had trees this big in Vietnam. Like all my life, I grew up in America, and I thought that the, 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 the redwood trees in America were, were large and, and giant and humongous. And, and you know, and that's a very rare thing in America. Like there's only like one area like in North, uh, um, uh, uh, around the San Francisco Bridge near uh, Northern California uh, where these trees exist and there's very limited like you can count how many trees they have right over here like there's areas between Vietnam and Cambodia that have these trees and there are so many of them it's unreal like they go in there and they just chop it down like the Cambodians they don't have like strict regulation like in America so they just chop it down sell it to whoever wants to buy it they don't care like they're not like you know it's a developing country it's not an emerging market it's like a frontier market so because of that they just don't give a shit they just hey man you know this is my land I'll chop down any trees I want and they just chop them down sell it and if there's any like uh, holes or any worms or anything that 
insects or bugs that eat uh, a portion of the tree. They chop down this tree that's five, six, seven hundred thousand year old, and they just screw it. They just burn it. They don't care, right? So the, it's just phenomenal that they, they, they have this kind of trees. And I, I couldn't believe it at first when I found out about these giant trees and this expensive wood in Vietnam, right? But then I realized that's the environment that I'm in, you know? And so I'm sharing this with you guys, right? Because I'm using several examples so that you guys learn. When you guys see things in front of you, trust it. Like I've made several videos already about being a, a street smart trader and a street smart investor. And you guys can say that this video is along the same lines, right? But trust, if you see it, why, why are you like disregarding that? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, uh, like if you see people making money in crypto, like why are you sitting there saying that, oh, that cannot be done? Like if you see all these millionaires popping up in crypto land, why, why are you saying that that's not possible? I remember when, um, when uh, I heard about all the millionaires that were being created at Dell Computers when I was in prison. Like I read about it in the newspapers and the magazines. I'd never seen what a computer, uh, a dot com is or any of that stuff. So I read about it and I was like, how can one company produce so many millionaires? And then when I finally got released out of prison and the first city I lived in was uh, the city of Austin, Texas, uh, where, um, where the Dell headquarters uh, was at. And I went down there and I went down to the lakes where all the, the guys that became millionaires from owning stock at Dell computers. And all their houses, I mean, they were just magnificent homes and there were so many of them. Like you can just go on forever and it would you know, be nonstop. And I remember thinking like, wow, like, I guess this is true. Like these guys really did make all these millions from uh, 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 Dell stock, you know? So I'm making this video guys because I still, you know, like I come back here to Vietnam and I still, you know, I talk to people here. I still talk to people in America and stuff. And you know, one of the things is that it's, it's really weird how people see things in front of them and they just don't trust what they believe or they don't trust what they see. Like they, they can't just fathom it, you know? And, and, and they just, they, they, they just can't imagine that that's happening. But the reality, guys, is that it is happening in crypto land. You know, these life-changing profits that you hear people talk about, that you hear me talk about, it's there, guys. And people say, oh, you know, that 2017 won't happen again. Yeah, it won't happen again like 2017, where we have 1,000x returns on one coin. But can we still have 100x returns? Can we still have 50x returns? Can we still have 5x returns? Absolutely. <laughs> there is no doubt in my mind. We still got, you know, I've been saying this for years that we still have another three to five years before these large, you know, life-changing profits uh, go away. And I'm saying like three to five years from 2017. So I still got, you know, it's 2019 right now. We still got another three years of this, guys. You know, I, I believe that within the next three years, something big is going to happen like in 2017. And we, there's going to be more millionaires being produced, there's going to be more deca millionaires being produced, and there's going to be more centillionaires that's going to be produced. Let me tell you guys something. I've been saying that I'm buying the shit out of Tezos. <laughs> guys, you better hope Tezos never goes to $10 or even $100, because if it goes to $100, man, you may never see me or hear from me again. And oh Lord have mercy, if it goes to $1,000, guys, guys. <laughs> If Tezos goes to a thousand dollars, I might buy one of those rockets <laughs> from Elon Musk and go take a, a vacation on Mars or on the moon, guys. <laughs> and not just me, but several of the guys on our team and several of you guys are going to come along with me. <laughs> All right, guys. Right. Uh, thanks for watching this video, guys. Uh, like always, guys, if you're serious about managing a seven, eight, nine figure portfolio in crypto, Right, go get you a copy of our cryptocurrency investing blueprint at you know www.cryptocurrency.market slash blueprint. And I'll look forward to seeing you guys in a future video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter at Hey Tai Zen. If you have friends or family or coworkers or anyone that wants to get into crypto and is very serious about it, or they 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 are managing a decent sized portfolio that's like you know 500,000 and up, uh, tell them to come and follow us because we'll share with them the real world experience that we have. We're not just gonna make up shit or read some stuff and regurgitate it back to you online. Thanks for watching this video, guys, and I'll see you guys in a future video.